Welcome to day four of Christian Unity Week. The theme of our reflection is praying together and three short pieces of scripture will stimulate our thoughts about the subject of prayer. Nigel will read them for us now. John 15 verse 15 says this, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. And then we have words of reassurance about prayer. Reassurance that we can't do it wrong. In Romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Finally, Luke 11 verses 1 to 4 recalls the time when the disciples asked Jesus to pray and to teach them how to pray. And he gave them this model of prayer that many traditions refer to as the Lord's Prayer. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Amen, and may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. God thirsts for relationship with us. He searches for us as he searched for Adam, calling to him in the garden, where are you? In Christ, God came to meet us. Jesus lived in prayer, intimately united to his father, while creating friendships with his disciples and all those he met. He introduced them to that which was most precious to him, the relationship of love with his father, who is also our father. Jesus and the disciples sang psalms together, rooted in the richness of their Jewish tradition. At other times, Jesus retired to pray alone. Prayer can be solitary or shared with others. It can express wonder, complaint, intercession, thanksgiving, or simply be in silence. Sometimes the desire to pray is there, but one has the feeling of not being able to do so. Turning to Jesus and saying, teach me, can pave the way. Our desire itself is already a sort of prayer. Getting together in a group can offer us additional support. Through hymns, words and silence, communion with one another and with God is created. If we pray with Christians of other traditions, we may be surprised to feel united by a bond of friendship that comes through Christ, the one who is beyond all division. The forms may vary, but it is the same spirit that brings us together. In the regularity of our common prayer, the love of Jesus springs up within us, we know not how. Common prayer, though, does not exempt us from personal prayer. One sustains the other. Let us take time each day to renew our personal intimacy with Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, your entire life was prayer perfect harmony with the Father. Through your Spirit, teach us to pray according to your will of love. May the faithful of the whole world unite in intercession and praise, and may your kingdom of love come. Amen.